Hey everybody, it's Brian. Um, this is not a tutorial. This is a follow-up to a tutorial that I've done and also a personal hobby of mine. Um, I've done a six-part series called the High Performance TCP Server Design and I wanted to revisit this because it's kind of a hobby of mine. Uh, it's just kind of like a personal challenge to see how far I can take this. Um, I've always been intrigued with TCP Server Design. Don't ask me why, but maybe I should be employed with like Microsoft or Apache or something. Who knows? But anyway, so we really stress tested this thing and um, on my Linux box at the time it was hard capped at about I think 1024 connections because that was my U limit if you will um, let me bring up a little I've kind of just you know for the sake of doing this I really wanted to uh, I changed my soft limit because that's what was really stopping me to 20,000 so I can open 20,000 file descriptors in Linux now Whenever you open a file or a socket or whatever you're opening, essentially, well, you guessed it, a file. And that is stopped by the U limit. Now, I set this to 20,000, so I could potentially open roughly 10,000 connections. Um, remember, the other program will have to open 10,000, and I open 10,000, and then you got all these files on the screen. So we won't actually get that, but it'll get close. So I, re I spent... Yeah, let me back up. I spent the pretty much bulk of my weekend rewriting this thing from the ground up, really. And we've got a TCP server, which, you know, just inherits QTCP server, and we're overriding Listen. And we're doing some, some socket magic in the background, and I'm using Threadpool. And the reason why I'm using Threadpool is, well, it's very streamlined. It's very easy to work with a pool of threads. And I read somewhere, I don't remember where it was, that it actually leverages um, multiple cores and um, it's very scalable. Now, I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. I swear I read it somewhere. Um, but I'm sitting here going, it's 2016. You know, programs should leverage multiple cores. Um, I know under the hood, the operating system really determines how many cores your program actually uses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, I kept that in the back of my mind during the design. Uh, so what this does is when listen is called, ta-da! It's going to go through and say for i equal to whatever the max of the global instance of the thread pool count is, it's going to create a new pool. Now, it's not a thread pool, it's a socket pool or a connection pool, which is this class up here. So if we have, um, if Q thread pool has a max of eight, it's going to create th eight TCP connection pools and put one in each thread, basically. So this is a Q runnable. This gets run through the thread pool. And it's also a Q object, so it can bind into the signals and slots. And what this does is this holds a essentially a list of TCP connections. The TCP connection is just pretty much a wrapper around the TCP socket or the QTCP socket. So, in short, what this thing does is when a new connection is made, it goes in, and I'll actually just show you. Whoopsie! I hit the wrong button there compile and run this. So there's, wow, that is really large for some reason. Let me size that in. So the max for my system, the Q thread pool is going to give me eight threads and you can see how it starts each one of those Q runnables. So when we go in and we're just going to do a telnet session, because why not? Uh, zero to zero to one. I cannot type tonight. We'll connect and you can see all it does is, is it just you know loads of connections so what this does is when a connection comes in it checks the number of connections each one of these pools has and says which one's the lowest one and then you know let's just say this guy's the lowest one it'll throw that in there and then the next one comes in and it does this you know round robin again and it just keeps doing it over and over and tries to balance the connections out between the threads now as the connections are made and disconnected the pools will, you know, raise and lower in, in volume depending on how many they get. And this was a bit tricky because obviously we're working with pointers, which is always a adventure and awesomeness. And then you have to do all the memory cleanup. And instead of doing the direct delete, let me move this off to the side here. I actually went in and just did delete later. Where was it? Where was it? I think I lost it. Oh, yeah. Started pending, blah, 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 blah. 
except, yeah. I played around with the straight delete and the delete later, and there's really no noticeable difference in performance. Um, I'm just kind of curious in practice what you guys use. Um, I kind of do delete later just because I think it's a little safer than just right out deleting the object when I'm not myself 100% certain that we're done using it. So we've got our little server here, and we've got eight of these pools spawned, and I'm actually just going to close it and restart it so that interface looks nice and neat. So we've got eight little connection pools in there. And we're going to load up a handy dandy a couple little things here. Maybe if my mouse will work with us here. All right. We're going to load up a little program called Siege, which you probably remember that. And we're going to go with the system monitor. So we can see our CPUs and everything. And you can see my computer has got eight CPUs, or eight cores, if you will. And you can see there's really not a whole lot going on. That's just spiked up for whatever reason. There's some silliness going on. But spiked is a relative term. You see they're all around you know, 0 3%. Core 7, for whatever reason, spiked up. Core 7 is probably what is running the app. But. So we're just going to throw 1,000 connections in here on Siege. And you can see it just goes and goes and goes and this is kind of going crazy in the background here and you can see our network usage spikes up that's all the connections being made right off the bat and then the CPU usage starts going and you can see each CPU is sharing in the work here or I should say each core is sharing in the work and if we just control C that and you might see down here this might move a little bit it'll be more obvious when we start ramping these connections up but you may see these connections being deleted and that's the delete later being called you can see the CPUs are doing their work and all the cleanups happening and all that so 100% availability um, concurrency about 521 that's really not bad longest transaction was 17.22 that's for I mean for a thousand concurrent it wasn't that bad um, elapsed time 20 seconds so what I like to do is I like to take things to their breaking point. Notice how we're not stopping the application, we're just leaving it in place. Um, this is good practice when you want to test things to make sure you don't have memory leaks. And let's just see if we can find this. Queue process stub is currently using 88k of memory here. I'm going to hit this sucker with 10,000 concurrent transactions. Let's just watch our cores. Now, I should note that um, this will start breaking, but you'll notice the software itself doesn't crash. And it's going to actually take a few seconds to spin up 10,000 connections. I honestly don't think Siege is capable of spinning up 10,000 connections. Um, I think that this server that I've written is probably going beyond what Siege is really going to be able to help us test with, and I may have to actually write my own test program to do this. Um, we're just going to let that hammer for a while, but you can see uh, memory usage is really kind of just sitting there. It's not doing a whole lot. Um, Siege isn't really doing a whole lot either. Well, actually 500 megs, but that's one question I had for anybody out there is the uh, cute process stub, this guy right here. That's not actually my program, is it? Because here's socket test 3. This is the actual name of the program, and it's pushing 40 megs. Now, that's something that I've really kind of perked my interest here, as you can see that Siege is using like 500 megs, and my program's only using like 40 megs. So there's a big memory difference there that really had me kind of curious. And if you've been watching, you can see that, you know, we're getting socket errors and disconnects and all sorts of timeouts and stuff. And it's because we're really just hammering the heck out of this. And you can see that's really apparent in looking at the CPUs. They're just going ballistic here. So that is um, probably hitting the upper limit of what this computer is physically capable of doing. That or I've hit the limit of what Siege is capable of doing. We're going to control C and Siege actually crashed. Segment fault core dumped. So we actually broke Siege in our little test here. That's kind of scary. My program didn't crash, though. So this is just something I've been playing around with here. Let's actually close that. And I want to... I kind of feel bad that we crashed Siege. Sorry, Siege. You've been nice to me. And I wanted to actually just play around with this a little bit because, you know, it's no fun unless you play with it, right? So we're going to 
uncomment this out, and we're going to actually make 100 threads, which is complete and total overkill. Um, I wanted to address this, or so somebody inevitably is going to say, well, the more threads you have, the more performance you'll have. No, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, threads are a very expensive operation, and so when you do cross-thread operations, it's very, very expensive because you're dealing with two different threads and you have to sync them. And this code actually does that. Where like, uh, where is the count function in here? Connection pool. Yeah, count. See, I'm using a Q mutex locker. So I mean, you have to actually lock this entire section of code just to read the variable. So um, yeah, it gets a little kind of nutty. But anyways, we're gonna actually create 100 threads and see if the performance improves a little bit here. I doubt it will. It'll actually probably go down because we're using 100 threads instead of 8. So we're using 100 threads and you see it actually created a, a connection pool 100 times. So we've got 100 Q runnables in memory here. Hey, let me get my system back up. System monitor. Alrighty. Let's get Siege back up and going here. Um, let's try not to crash Siege this time. Let's do 5,000 concurrent connections. And just see what the memory and CPU profiling looks like. Yeah, you can see they're really starting to grind away and work at it. So. I guess the, the questions I had to folks out there is, is there anybody out there that's knowledgeable about TCP server design? Um, and is this like the preferred way of doing it? Not the 100 threads, just the using a thread pool and then having multiple sockets on each thread in the pools. And we're going to start crashing Siege here. I can already see it happening. Siege is already starting to buckle. So we'll just cancel that. And you can see that uh, we had... 87% availability. Not great, not bad. We had uh, 12,000 hits and about 1,800 of those failed. And those probably failed due to timeouts just because they were sitting in the connection queue waiting. And of course, if we lower that number, we have much better results because we're doing less operations. Let's see, 100% availability. So I guess some of my questions, anybody out there who knows more than me on the subject, um, is thread pooling the way to go? Is multiple threads even the way to go? Um, I know sockets themselves under the hood are intrinsically asynchronous, so using a thread is kind of redundant overkill, especially when you build a, a server that's like one thread per socket. It's just very bad server design. So that's pretty much all for this. I just wanted to kind of get you guys' feedback. Um, let me know via personal mail, or preferably join the Void Drums Facebook group. Um, I'll be posting this video and trying to start an open discussion in there about this. There's oh, pushing 470 folks in there. Some of them are extremely bright, smarter than me, um, which kind of scares me. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with them being in the group and they're that smart. But <laughs> so let me know.